and welcome to WWDC! Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a junior doctor working in Cambridge. And in this video, I'm going to break down some of the most exciting features that are coming to the new iPad OS that Apple unveiled at this year's WWDC. We're calling it iPad OS, and I'd like to give you a first look. And it seems like all the changes they're making to the iPad with iPad OS are essentially gearing towards making the iPad more of a replacement for your MacBook. Yes! So yeah, I'm going to be talking about some of the announcements that I'm personally most excited about. And as usual, there's going to be timestamps in the video description and in a pinned comment and over here so you can skip around the video if you feel like it. Oh, it's awesome. But now let's just get into it. So firstly, one of the things they really went on about during the keynote and also splashed everywhere on the website afterwards is the fact that the new iPad OS has all these split screen features built into it. I'll be honest, the main reason I use split screen is when I'm in a lecture or in a class and I'm pretending to take notes on one window, but then I'm browsing Reddit or something in the other window. So that's a kind of handy use for split screen. It's probably not quite the use case they had in mind and it's probably not quite the sort of thing that the new features are uh, help you out with. What if I want to get back to that last app? Could we make that super easy? The answer is yes. I can just drag from the bottom and they fan out just like that. Secondly, we're going to finally be able to plug in external drives into the iPad. That's right. You can now plug in a thumb drive. Thumb drives, external disk drives, and, and uh, SD cards all show up right in the Files app. This is absolutely next level. Like, the reason that I can't use my iPad for photo editing or even for video editing is because I'm very cheap and I got the 64 gigabyte version, and there is no way I can edit raw photos on a 64 gig iPad or video at all on a 64 gig iPad. But now this one's really great too. Sometimes when you're working with a camera, you'd like to import directly into an app like Lightroom and now you can. That's gonna be absolutely game changing and I think that's gonna mean that the iPad replaces my laptop for a lot of my photo editing workflow. Thirdly, in the new iPad OS, they're apparently going to be completely revamping the way that they do text editing. Yeah. Text editing is kind of a bit of a ball ache on the iPad at the moment. Moving the cursor around to select stuff is a little bit fiddly. Moving the cursor is easier than ever. Just pick it up and drag it where you want it to go. And they're revamping the text editing features that makes it more legit for actually writing stuff and not being a little bit frustrated every time you're writing something. Point number four, in iPad OS this autumn, they're gonna be introducing more keyboard shortcuts. And this is one of the main facets of my personal productivity system. Like I think productivity is partly about having the right mindsets and the right principles and putting those in place, but also it's about having the right tactics to efficiently do things and be able to save time. And the problem that I've always had with the iPad and why I've never quite been able to switching to it for everything is just the fact that Almost everything I do on an iPad is a bit less efficient than doing the same thing on a MacBook. But hopefully with the introduction of keyboard shortcuts this autumn, that might become a bit closer to what performance is like on a MacBook Pro in terms of efficiency of action, economy of motion, all this sort of stuff. Big fan of keyboard shortcuts. I think more people should use keyboard shortcuts more often. So another thing that I'm quite excited about is the fact that full desktop web browsing is coming to Safari. Oh, it's awesome. At the moment, Safari counts as a mobile browser, and this doesn't make any difference for the most part, unless you're doing something like trying to edit a website, for example, with Ghost or WordPress or Squarespace. I use Ghost at the moment, and if I wanna edit my post, I can't do it to the extent that I'd be doing it on a desktop. And so when iPadOS comes out in autumn, it'll be a lot more possible to make website changes on the fly, stuff like that. And ultimately, there is the new sidecar feature that's being introduced to iPadOS and to macOS Catalina come autumn. Because now you can use your iPad as a second display for your Mac. And there have been ways to do this in the past using things like Duet, but it's never quite worked perfectly to the point that I've always tried these things out and never really stuck to them. I'm hoping that once this new sidecar feature gets added, then I'll be able to take the MacBook, take the iPad, pop it down in a library or in a coffee shop and get this really cool like vibe where I'm like, you know, doing stuff here, doing stuff here and get this and feel like a bit more of a Don, a bit more of a boss for having these two displays. Yeah. And finally, apparently with the new iPad OS and with the new iOS, you'll be able to connect two different pairs of AirPods to watch the same thing. We have all had a time where we wanted to share a movie or a song with a friend. Now you can with just a tap. You can both connect your AirPods to the same iPad and that's gonna be next level because you can be you know, sitting on the sofa together or snuggling up in bed or whatever floats your boat, maybe sitting on an aeroplane and you would be watching the same thing. And that's really cool. Um, it's not gonna be particularly useful for me at the moment because I don't have anyone to share such a, an intimate experience with, but perhaps one day, you know, when I get married and I convince my future wife to get an, a, a pair of AirPods, we'll be able to have these like cute little date nights where we're both sitting on the sofa and watching something on an iPad. Or like if we're on the train and going somewhere together and she's got her head resting on my shoulders and we can have the iPad out and 
watching airport anyway yeah uh, that's another thing that I'm maybe looking forward to a little bit further down the line but not quite just yet so that was an overview of some of my favorite features that are coming to iPad OS this autumn I'm very excited I use my iPad for absolutely everything well not everything not for video editing not for photo editing but I'm hoping that it'll become more of a laptop replacement once the new iPad OS comes out and as soon as it does and as soon as I've tinkered around with it I will be right here giving my thoughts and unsolicited opinions about how the iPad fits into my life so thank you very much for watching the video thank you all for coming and sharing the time with us. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please consider doing so. Have a great week. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thank you.